So the purpose of this video is to explore how we move from the activity the powers of 10 into developing the laws of logarithms. And we're going to start with one of the first results that we saw, and that was that 2 could be written approximately as 10 to the power 0 0.3. Um, and we saw earlier on that this meant that log base 10 of 2 was approximately 0 0.3. And we're going to generalize this um, in a little while. Um, but this is how we talk about logarithms and how they compare to indices. Now, when you see log base 10 of 2, um, sometimes we don't bother writing the 10. And sometimes people just write log base 2, uh, sorry, log of 2 equals 0 0.3 not base 2, um, and they omit the base there. So if there's no base there, we assume it's meant to be base 10. That can be ambiguous because it could mean that the person's forgotten to write the base in. They're just a, an error. Um, and to help avoid that and to save a bit of time, you'll often see, or occasionally see anyway, uh, log base 10 written as LG. So LG, when you see that, means log base 10. So this is the the way of writing log base 10 of 2 is approximately 0 0.3. Now I want to um, generalize this expression into, uh, well, we'll look at the specifics of this and how we get there. Um, what we did is we, we said 2 uh, is approximately equal to 10 to the power 0 0.3. And then we, we defined this function log, and we did that to both sides. So we said log of 2 um, is approximately equal to log of 10 to the power 0 0.3 okay uh, and that's our definition of the function log um, and what we defined log as has been the the inverse function of 10 to the power of so 10 to the power of 0 0.3 and then take the log of that we've applied a function and its inverse and if we apply a function and then its inverse the result we get will be the same as the the input to the original function so that means that the right hand side of this is 0 0.3 so that's the kind of algebra around what we did so if we now generalize that, um, and we start with, instead of 2 is approximately 10 to the power 0 0.3, we generalize that and say that A uh, is equal to 10 to the power B. We take logs of both sides, and I'm going to write that as LG here. I'm going to switch my notation from time to time. LG of A is LG of 10 to the power B. These parentheses aren't always necessary, but they do help clarify what we're talking about a lot of the time. So I'm putting them in here just for clarity. They're not necessary, though. Um, we're going to leave this as it is. We've defined log base 10 as the inverse of 10 to the power of, so the right-hand side becomes B. I'm going to change my notation to write the 10 in here, um, and we end up with log base 10 of A equals B. And this relationship between um, this top line and this bottom line here is the first relationship that we need to know in our laws of logarithm. So that a equals 10 to the power b, and log 10 to the, uh, sorry log base 10 of a equals b are identical expressions. Um, I'm going to put this kind of equals line with an arrowhead on each side. Um, that means that uh, these two things, if you know one thing, it implies the other one is true, uh, and if you know the the first one it implies the second is true. If you know the second, it implies the first is true. So that means that these two expressions are um, mathematically identical expressions. That uh, And this is the connection between exponents uh, and logarithmic form. So that's the first of the log rules. We'll move on now to look at some of the other ones. OK, the next stage of what we did, having worked out that uh, log 2 was approximately 0 0.3, we used that fact to work out uh, what log 5 was. And we used the fact that 2 times 5 equals 10 uh, and we wanted to know what log 5 was so what we did is we wrote um, we rearranged that we needed to know what 5 was so we said that 5 is 10 divided by 2 and we could write 10 in log form as 10 to the power 1 and 2 in log form as 10 to the power 0 0.3 and we know from our law of indices and our law of indices states that um, if we have a to the m divided by a to the n, the result is a to the m minus n, and we know that that therefore gives us 10 to the power 0 0.7, 1 minus 0 0.3, so that's 0 0.7. So that's where we ended up with 5 is 10 to the power 0 0.7, so log 5, and we should put log base 10 of 5 in there really, uh, was 0 0.7 approximately. So that was the way we worked out what log 
of 5 was. Now let's just look at that in a little bit more detail and we'll look at the um, the algebra behind that and we'll, we'll, the, the work behind that and we'll, we'll generalize that a little bit more. Um, so we started by saying 2 times 5 equals 10. Um, we then said that we can write this, now we know what 5 is as a power of 10, we can write that in this form. So this is using the powers of 10 that we worked out. We know that uh, log 2 is 0 0.3, so it's 10 to the power 0 0.3. Log 5 is 0 0.7, so 5 is 10 to the power 0 0.7. And we can make that statement that's true. Um, and from there, we know that that's true because using the law of exponents, um, we know that that's how the law of exponents works. By multiplying two numbers where the base is the same, we add the powers. So 0 0.3 plus 0 0.7 gives us 1. That's one of our other exponent rules. Um, now, 0 0.3 plus 0 0.7, well, 0 0.3 is log 2. So let's just write that as log 2. And 0 0.7 is log 5. And that equals log base 10 of 10. Now the connection here is that the 2 and the 5 multiplied together to make the 10. That was the, the top line. That's why this worked. But we can generalize that and say, well, any two numbers here would be multiplied together to make that other number. And you might have seen it when you worked out some of the other results there, the same thing. So we can generalize this to say log base 10 of A plus log base 10 of B is log base 10 of AB. And I'm going to put that in brackets just for clarity. Um, and of course it doesn't need to be in base 10, it would work in any base, so log A plus log B is log of AB. And that's your second rule of logarithms um, that you need to know, that if you're adding two logarithms with the same base, it doesn't matter what the base is, but it must be the same base, um, that the result will be the product of the two numbers, A, A times B. Um, it's the log of a times b as the result. Okay, and we we started there with multiplication. And we started there with multiplication because we could have just as easily worked this out as a division calculation. We could have said 10 divided by 2 is 5. Um, so we have 10 to the power 1 divided by 10 to the power 0 0.3 is 10 to the power 0 0.7 um, and we're using our laws of exponents there to say that 1 minus 0 0.3 is 0 0.7 and we know that this is um, log here we've got log uh, 10 log base 10 of 10 minus log base 10 of 2 is log base 10 of 5 and again this comes back to the relationship of 10 divided by 2 is 5 and that's why this works. So if we replace the 10 and the 2 with a and b we end up with log a minus log b equals log of a over b and that's the second rule of logarithms and again it works it doesn't matter what the base is as long as we're consistent with the base we can be log base 10 or log indeed of any other base uh, that's the next rule of logarithms. So having established those laws of logarithms, we can move on to a few others that develop from the powers of 10. Um, when we wanted to work out um, log 4, um, we could actually do that now in a slightly easier way. Uh, we can write 4 as log 2 times 2, and we know from our laws of logarithms that that equals log 2 plus log 2, um, because we've just realized that from the previous laws of logarithms. So we can simplify that. When we wanted to work out log 8, uh, well log 8 is log of um, 2 times 4, uh, which is log 2 plus log 4. And since we know that log 4 was log 2 plus log 2, that's log 2 plus log 2 plus log 2. Um, and we can keep this going. We could do this the same with uh, log base 10 of 16, or indeed any base, but we were working with base 10. Uh, and we could say that that's log um, base. Well, we could simplify that and we could say that's 4 times 4. Um, so that's log 4 plus log 4. And log 4 was, we've already worked out, was log 2 plus 2. So that becomes log 2 plus log 2. That's from the first log 4. 
plus from the second log 4 another log 2 plus log 2 um, and what you can see is that this is uh, two lots of log 2 and this is three lots of log 2 and this is four lots of log 2 so each time we double the number on the left hand side here we raise it by another power of 2 we end up adding another log 2 onto the side so we can write this this is log 4 which was log of 2 squared this was log 3 uh, sorry log 8 which was log of 2 cubed to the power of 3 and this was log 16 which is log of 2 to the power 4 uh, and this sequence carries on so we have a general sequence in this context that log 2 to the power n is n log sorry I shouldn't have put that uh, bracket in there log 2 I can I can add a bracket in there that's uh, wouldn't normally have these brackets around the outside um, so perhaps we'll erase those just for clarity get rid of that one and get rid of that one so that's our generalization but of course this doesn't just work with uh, 2 it works with anything so we can say that log of a to the power n can be written as n log a and again we're working in base 10 here but as long as the base is consistent that will work in any base having established those laws of logarithms a few other things that we can do with that um, so far we've been working in base 10 and your calculator has a button for logarithms in base 10 um, but we could be working in other bases and other bases are okay as long as it's relatively straightforward so if we have a problem um, that says log base 2 of 8 is x well we can rearrange that to say 2 to the power x is 8 and we can solve that because we hopefully know that x is 3 um, and we've got some nice integers here but sometimes we'll be working in numbers that don't work quite nicely for example if we had log base 7 of 23 is x we'd end up with the problem that 7 to the power x is 23 and we're back with a rather difficult situation that we well what is x it's a very difficult thing to work out so there's a little uh, thing called the change of base rule here um, and let's start by generalizing this expression let's say log base a of b is x and we use our laws of exponents to say that that means that a to the power x is b now we've got the log base 10 button on our calculators so let's use that and say log base 10 of a to the x is log base 10 of b since those two things a to the x and b are equal log base 10 of those things must be equal um, log base 10 of a to the power x we've just seen from the laws of log logarithms that this can be written as x times log base 10 of a and that's equal to log base 10 of b and then if we want to know x we can just divide both sides by log base 10 of a and we end up with log base 10 of b over log base 10 of a and that gives us our law uh, change of logarithms rule and we saw that x back here uh, we saw that x was defined as log base a of b so x is also log base a of b and this is our change of base rule uh, which is very useful uh, for manipulating logarithmic expressions to be able to evaluate them using our calculator and there's two more useful results um, the first one if we look at log base a of 1 and say that's equal to x well we know from our connection between logarithmic expressions and exponent expressions that means that a to the power x is 1 well we know hopefully that anything other than 0 to the power 0 is 1 so that means x must be 0 so we can generalize that saying log base a of 1 is 0 so anything um, the log in, in any base of 1 is always going to be 0 uh, you might want to think about how that ties back to the idea that uh, adding multiplying by 1 makes absolutely no difference and adding 0 makes absolutely no difference uh, to a number and the connection between adding and multiplication when we're working with logs so uh, there's a, a fairly hopefully a conceptual tie in there the second result is if we want to look at um, log in any base of 1 over b um, well we can write 1 over b as b to the power negative 1 so that becomes log base a of b to the power negative 1 and we know from the laws of logarithm that that is negative 1 log base a of b so this is our 
the next useful result if you like log base a of 1 over b is negative of log base a of b and you can take that to other powers that we can say log base a of 1 over b to the power n is negative log base a of b to the power n and of course that n can come out of there so um, you can write that as negative n log base a of b um, and there's another useful result there um, that, that can sometimes help you simplify problems okay that's a quick summary of the laws of logarithms and how you can use them the next thing to do is practice applying them